Hey guys, so yesterday uh, I made a video, it was kind of long for me, it's like a 40 minute video, um, giving a proof that Catholicism is true. And I explained like one of my biggest obstacles when, uh, when I was a Protestant to Catholicism. And there was a lot of scripture I quoted, a lot of scripture I read, uh, I read a lot from the church councils. So I had so much in my head I was trying to remember like, Right off the bat, one of the most important verses of the uh, Bible verses of the video, I kept saying the wrong book. So I was given the verse and the chapter correct, but I kept saying the wrong book. And I probably repeated it like five or six times. And um, normally, if you, if you watch my videos, you know, I'll make a video and I'll post it and I got to get back to work. I'm usually, you know, just starting work or whatever. And there'll be blips or bloopers and I'll apologize in the comments. But this is really directed at our Protestant brothers and sisters. And they take, you know, if, if I take, a, if I misquote a scripture, they're going to blow me up on it. So I um, talked to my son in a mass this morning and he thinks he could edit it. So I'm going to get that out later. Uh, I got to meet, meet up with him later. But I just uh, wanted to share something really cool with you guys. Uh, and I got to make this quick because I got to go visit my mom in the hospital. So yesterday, my mom, she's 87 years old. She was rushed to the hospital. And um, long story short, she had a uh, perforated uh, colon. I guess she had di diverticulitis, and which caused it. And um, the surgeon wasn't like really, uh, really optimistic about her chances of surviving the surgery. But it's, she didn't have the surgery. She would get sepsis and she, you die from that. So it, I was really worried, uh, and I had um, had texted my priest, Father Derek, and I just asked him if he would pray for my mom. And with, <coughs> excuse me, within 10 minutes, he was in her hospital room praying for my mom, <laughs> praise the Lord. And I was like, this is why I call this guy Padre Pio. I'm not even lying. It was like eight minutes he was there with his collar, anointing my mom's head with oil. And praying for her and it was it was so awesome I, I was tempted to videotape it but I'm like no nah, this ain't appropriate this is a very sacred time and uh, by the grace of God you know there was the worst case scenario she wouldn't make it through the surgery because she's 87 and she's a smoker uh, second worst case scenario she'll wake up with a bag but I would just be thankful that she woke up and the best case scenario, which the odds were slim, was everything would go successful. She wouldn't need a bag and she, uh, she'll be fine. And by the grace of God and the power of prayer, we got the best case scenario. So I'm going to go visit her and the, the nurse says she's alert, she's talking, she feels great. But as I'm watching Father anoint my mother with oil and pray for her, the scripture just flooded through my mind that I'm going to share with you. It's in James chapter 5, verse 14, 15, and 16. Is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders. And the Greek word for that word elder is presbyterius, where we get the word priest. It can be translated priest or elder. Call the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. I watched Father anoint my mom with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick man. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore confess your sins one to another. And pray for one another that you may be healed. So the sacrament of anointing of the sick is what took place. And in such a natural way. And... Again, I'm just struck. You know, I was, I, I started following Jesus, I don't know, 37 years ago. Thir my first 30 years as a Protestant. And I read the Bible day and night. I read that scripture so many times as I read through the New Testament so many times. And only two times in my Christian life did I actually live it out. Where it actually happened in both times was as a Catholic. And, you know, I'm just so thankful you know, that God used that sacrament to heal my mother last night. And he used my brothers and sisters, of course, my wife and children and my brothers and sisters and my nieces and nephews were praying for my mom. And even uh, John over at Catholic for Rednecks said he prayed a rosary for her. 
So I know the power of prayer within the church. And we, you know, we all ask the saints in heaven to pray. So as Catholics, we don't just get the church to pray for us. We get all heaven and earth praying for us. Hallelujah. But we have the power of the sacrament from a holy priest it was just so powerful to me. And like I said, it, it only happened twice in my Christian life. And both times it brought tears to my eyes because it was such a powerful supernatural event happening in my presence. The Bible was alive. The Bible was alive. It wasn't just some document that we debate about and argue the, uh, what does this mean? What does that mean? No, it was, it's a, it was alive. I seen it. And, you know, you may have had the anointing for a sick person who didn't make it. And, you know, that's great news too, because there's a, there's a verse not too many people like quoting, but it's in the Psalms. I believe it's Psalm 116. It says, precious is the, in the, in the, Precious is the, the sight of the death of a saint, or precious to the Lord is the death of his saints. Some I think some of the modern versions might say, God loves the death of his saints. And what it means is that he loves us so much, he wants to be with us in heaven. He wants to take us from our pain. He wants to take us from our suffering. And he loves that because he knows what's best. And that's what happened the first time with my... Uh, stepdad who led me to back into Catholicism but it was supernatural as well his smile on his face when the priest said I absolve you from all sins with the authority of the holy catholic apostolic church I and mean, it was powerful and he smiled and he died that night knowing he was forgiven of all sins and the anointing you know and again, like I said, you know, that's hard when a loved one leaves us, but it's still, you know, Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. So when we pray for these healings, at the end of the day, we pray, Lord, not my will, but your will. But God knows sometimes our work here isn't done. St. Paul said, to die for me would be gain. That would be my gain. But to live is for you. I live for you, you know. And even though my mom is 87, I, I believe God has a few more years, Lord willing, left for her to get things done on this earth while she's here. And it was a gift to us, you know. It would have been, it would have been a blessing to her to be in heaven pain-free. You know, she walks with a walker now. She'd be running with the Lord. But it was a gift to us. And again, the sacraments of the church are straight out of the Holy Scriptures, straight out of the Bible. If you're a Bible-believing Christian and you become Catholic... Everything Catholic is just so refreshing. And, and my cradle Catholics, I know, you you know, I thank God for you guys that you kept the church while all of us other guys left. But when we, came, when we come back, we're so thankful. And I hope you don't take the sacraments for granted, all of the sacraments. It's just, it's, it's, it's living. It's alive. The church is alive. The sacraments are alive. God is alive. The Holy Spirit is alive in us, you know. And uh, so I just want to say, man. I love being Catholic. God bless and stay Catholic. I got to run see my mom. Keep praying for her. She still has this infection uh, that we need to get to get better, but she's doing way better than they uh, expected. Thank you. God bless.